Hello, everybody. Welcome into Chicago as the struggling Bills look, look to take on the nearly tanking Bears. Uh, Bills, with a win, can cement themselves back atop the AFC least um, with 7-8 and eight record. So they're looking to just get there uh, and set themselves up to be, you know, a win away from the playoffs. Um, with the Patriots losing this week, so they're just looking to get back on track. It's been a really rough go for them, but they can kind of stop this kid here. The Bears, I mean, looking to play spoiler. That's kind of what they've done this season so far. The Bears are going to jump out 7 nothing, Make it 10 to nothing, 17 to nothing. But the Bears do get a score there. Looks like it's probably a turnover, but... 23 to 7 at half. Bear, or the Buffalo Bills have this well in hand. Bears going to need a crazy comeback. It does not look like that's coming for them. So, a good win from Buffalo. 33 to 14, I believe was the score. Um, good job to get back on track after it had been a very rough stretch of games that we just talked about. Um, scoring summary here we've got Diggs. Good to see Diggs get a couple touchdown catches. That is really so bad. Um, Gabe Davis, a 49-yard touchdown grab as well. Um, and then Wilson gets one thrown in there. Damian Pierce gets a touchdown in the fourth quarter for the Bears. Uh, whoever Harris is gets one. Um, sorry, I had to sneeze, and I'll probably have to sneeze again, but keep rolling through the stats. Wow, what a game by Diggs. Alright, I should be back. Gabe Davis obviously had the big catch. But yeah, good to see Diggs get going. Holy sacks. Busy day. Yeah, clowning with three, settle with two, sack Allen a sack and a half. Real tough damn the old quarterbacks. Murray gets the only pick of the day. No force fumbles, so there's no recoveries. There's still one turnover on the day, not too bad. And kicking makes it the yarder. Does miss an extra point though as a walk. Nope, it was not. Just missed an extra point. So, kind of a blemish on his day, but it didn't end up mattering. And yeah, O'Donnell is pretty good. Six punts, 55 average. And that's going to do it. So, I'll catch you guys in our next game. Alright, hello everybody. Welcome into Arrowhead Stadium. We've got the Seahawks heading over from the NFC West to take on the Chiefs. I believe this is our last game of the NFC West versus the AFC West. Because I believe they've played and the AFC West has absolutely whooped them like I think only the team to win actually have they won any of these games I don't think they have so Seahawks looking to be the only team to get a win against this uh, entire division um, at least at this point in the season I think it's pretty low uh, number of wins against this division because uh, I think the Raiders are undefeated against the NFC um, I think the only win in the AFC is the Niners over the Dolphins so yeah I'm pretty sure this is going to be the only one they could get uh, I'll maybe fact check that but yeah, crazy. Let's see if they can pull it off. Not only against the other top team in the AFC, no biggie. Missed opportunity. Will they tie it up? Overtime. Ah, right, the Chiefs won it. Won it in overtime again. They keep winning them in overtime, but Seahawks are going to fall again. Uh, tight game. Wow, I almost found a long field goal. They were back there a ways. But good job by the Chiefs taking care of business here at home. Uh, they've been playing a lot of these close games, but they keep winning them. So, you know, can't really argue with that. They maintained the one seed, um, which is good for them, of course. They uh, have a half game lead on that. And it's still a tough schedule coming down, but everybody has a tough schedule coming down. Um, we'll take a look at the uh, scoring summary here. 
Butker, a 54 yarder. Kelsey, touchdown catch. Boyle, Russell Gage, Penny, with touchdown run. Gordon with touchdown run. And the 54 yarder. Yep, so two 54 yarders by Butker. Uh, very busy day, but yep, that'll be the difference for sure. Uh, player stats, Russ, three picks. Brutal. I mean, can't do it. You can't, you can't have three picks against a team this good and expect to win. Mahomes was much better. I mean, 80% push percentage, two touchdowns. Honestly, it's a miracle they're in the game, considering these two quarterback performances. Um, but the rushing attack here, now that it was particularly good. So it's kind of no edge for Seattle there. Uh, Matt Calf, and Traquan Smith over 100 yards. Boy almost had 100. Tyreek, 7 for 99. But blocking here, Fant, Myers, Hopkins, Orlando Brown, and Braxton Jones allow these sacks. Tyron Matthews, 11 tackles and two tackle for losses. Chandler Jones, two tackle for losses as well. Greg Gaines, food of board with the sacks. Oh, this is full sacks, and then we got you know, a few half sacks thrown in there. Levi Wallace, two picks. Anthony Harris with one. Some deflections here. No forced fumbles. So, I don't, know, see, I, don't, I don't know how this game was so close. Ooh, he does miss 50 yarder, so does Prater. Prater could have went one for one. Could have been a different game. But yeah, that's going to do it. I'll catch you guys in uh, our next game. Alright. A little bit of a rivalry here between the Giants and the Vikings. Guys have been going back and forth. I want to do this as a full game, but... We got time to keep up with, unfortunately. Uh, Giants at seven and seven, looking to keep pace in the NFC Wild Card race. The Vikings are looking to play spoiler, um, but they also are pretty much flying up the draft standing. So, uh, you know, a loss for them doesn't necessarily hurt. But you know, these two teams, you know, kind of had a little friendly competition going as the one and two picks last year. Their uh, matchups been a much anticipated one. So hopefully, it's a good game. Wow, Giants go strike first. Minnesota does answer. 10 to 10. Minnesota takes that 7 point lead going into half. Oh, the 4 point lead, sorry, 17 13. Giants knotted up. And the Vikings are going to pull it off 27 24. A tight game back and forth. Um, but in the end, the Giants did not have enough in the tank to beat them. Uh, we'll take a look at the scoring summary to see how we got here. Sam Howell looked like he had a very nice day. We got a 95-yard Eno Benjamin run. KJ Osborne, 42-yard catch from Sam Howell. CJ Ham a touchdown in there. Osborne, another one. And Croft getting the uh, touchdown that ended up tying it. But Joseph, 41-yarder, being the difference uh, in the player stats now. Sam Howell, 67% crucial edge, two touchdowns, no picks. Daniel Jones avoids throwing the picks, but only has one touchdown and only completes 54% of his passes, so not a very uh, efficient day from him, but at least it wasn't uh, interception fest. Dalvin Cook, where it's a carry, but Eno Benjamin, 12 for 132 and a touchdown. A big day for him, for sure. Into the receiving, Slayton, 130 yards. Osborne with the two touchdowns on 120 yards. Justin Jefferson getting 80 yards in there, too, so at least he wasn't absent. Crofts gets his only catch, turns into a touchdown. James Cook, who was apparently back, got injured, so that's rough. Beecham with two sacks allowed. O'Neal, Johnson, Alfano, one each. Brian Cook with eight. Rousseau with eight leads the way in tackles. Wanham and Oak and Joby with two tackle for losses here. Well, nothing for the rookie. Wanham, Tuttle, Preston Smith with the sacks. Lawson, Osa, Dexter Lawrence, and Thibodeau get the half sack with one tackle for loss. So, not going to kill his case, not gonna kill his case, but not really going to set him aside. Let's set him apart here. Oof, that hurts. Gonna miss it. Two 50 yarders. One of those is, you know, the difference in the game. So, 
a tough game from Greg Gano. Um, obviously, you don't know exactly how long those are, but I'd like to see him be able to knock in one of those, give him the win, but didn't end up happening that way. Um, and, yeah, that's going to be our game here. Vikings take this one. Giants falling to 7-8. and eight. Uh, Going to be probably on the outside looking in for the playoff picture. It's been a rough week for uh, NFC uh, wild card contenders. Um, so we'll have to see kind of how that all shakes out. Uh, the NFC South, I think, all won, though. So as far as uh, NFC playoff picture goes, the NFC South has got to be feeling really good about their standing now. But, uh, yeah, we will uh, keep rolling. Hello, everybody. We got an AFC South matchup here. The Titans at 7-7 seven and seven looking to get above 500 and um, push the uh, Jaguars, I guess, for the playoff spot. Um, they'll need the Jaguars to lose next week and themselves to win to get within a game, and then they can beat them, uh, sweep the series uh, in Week 18. That's what they're looking at right now, but they need to win this week to have to be a possibility. If they, if they lose this week, they're eliminated from the playoffs. So they need to just take care of business here and get – um, you know, get this thing moving forward. Texans, I mean, they're looking at the number one pick, but they can play spoiler too as they get an easy early touchdown. They've been playing pretty good football with Garrett Wilson back. They took the Chiefs to the brink, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but Titans look like they're going to take care of this one. 21 to 10 so far. Houston does cut it to a score, but, you know, Tennessee answers right back. Oh, but Houston makes it a game again. Uh-oh. And they could not execute at the end. 28-23, to 23, a hard-fought game by the Texans. But in the end, they do fall just a bit short. Couldn't really get past you know, the 40-yard line or so, and they needed to score a touchdown. So um, a good day for Tennessee. Did what they needed to do. Uh, Johnson, Keyshawn Johnson with the 76-yard touchdown grab. Cook gets two of them to answer it with a Tannehill run. Uh, and then a couple field goals. A.J. Brown, touchdown. Uh, ends up being enough for the difference. But they do get an Elijah Mitchell touchdown run. And a 55-yarder by Gay to cut it to five points. Uh, it just wasn't enough in the end. Um, as we get a look at the player stats now, Tannehill had a nice day. Three touchdowns, no picks. 65% completion percentage, so a little bit lower. Yards per attempt than maybe like an elite game, but still a very clean game from him. Uh, and Brissett obviously helped by that 70-60-yarder, but... And aside from that, you know, you're looking at a little bit of a rough performance. But overall, it shakes out to be a pretty decent game for him. So that's, you know, you can't complain too much. Derrick Henry, 5 yards per carry, 80 yards total. Mitchell, 4 yards per carry, 40 yards total. Pretty good days on the ground, honestly. On the spectrum of games that we've seen, these are certainly not the worst games uh, out there. Um, and we see Shepard leads the way with eight or 6 for 80. Cook, the two touchdowns, 69 yards. Big day. Uh, Keyshawn Johnson, obviously, again, the big one helping him, but he does end up with five total grabs for 111 and a touchdown. Garrett Wilson, five for 83, a nice day for him. A.J. Brown, four for 63, the touchdown. Obviously, 28 of it came on one, so we still need to get him more involved, I'd say. But Kyron Williams had a nice grab, too, 28-yarder. Uh, Stacks allowed, Bradbury, Tunsil, and Foles. Divine Diablo, with two, or nine tackles and two tackle for losses, leads away in both. Taylor Tart also involved in the tackle for loss. Uh, race there. Greenard and Jeffrey Simmons with the sacks. Hendrickson and Logan Hall combined for the other one. P.J. Williams the, the interception. Jeffrey Simmons and Divine Diablo force a fumble. Jeffrey Simmons the only one to recover one. Hard to say which one it was from. Uh, but none anything of those. Two for two from that game from 50 yards. Over one from 40 yards for Sly. So could have given them the cushion they really felt comfortable with there at the end. But didn't get done, so they still win. Not going to be mad at them yet. But, yep, Titans win. And I think we got about two or three more games, I want to say. Not 100% true, but I feel like we're getting close. So we got a few games to go. We'll keep rolling. Their efforts is, you know, one of the worst teams in the league, but they've been in these games. Uh, they almost beat the Packers especially, so um, they're not a slouch, but it's, it's about as easy as it gets for the Niners. they got to take care of business. As we jump out 10 nothing, 17 nothing. Washington does get on the board here in the second quarter. Got a safety in there. You'll have to see safeties. Wow, 19-14 for half. Commanders will come storming back, take a one-point lead. All right, cut it back to a score. And they... they did they get it? Washington wins it. Oh, man. Blows the layup. Oh, Lord. The NFC worst. Oh, Lord. 
34 to 29 victory for Trey Lance and the Commanders. I mean, it looked like an ugly game. It was like what 19 to nothing because of the safety. Like, I mean, it was 19 to seven, but yeah, the safety looked like it was gonna be a nail in the coffin, and then they just stormed back and immediately take the lead. It was really a great turnaround there in the second quarter, maybe into the third. Um, yep, yeah, into the third, and after that, I mean, just never looked back. Uh, take a look at the scoring summary because uh, we've got the Lattimore pick six to kick things off. So. Uh, I don't want to try to get these started. A couple field goal, well, field goal and a Mostert run. Yeah, that's their 17. Uh, then they do get a Gibson touchdown run, but the safety is like, oh, shit, it's over. But Watson comes back, gets a touchdown, uh, and then Gibson in the third gets a touchdown. San Francisco does end up taking the lead back with a 52-yard field goal. Ayuk furthers the lead with an 80-yard touchdown grab from Fields, but then it's a Lance run and a Connor Hayward run, and uh, Washington just pulls away. And... Uh, the 49ers didn't have enough time to answer. Um, into the player stats, a both quarterbacks kind of had a pretty similar day. Fields couldn't complete a pass save his life, but he had more yards. Um, but yeah, both were touching on a pick. Lance almost completed 60% of his passes, so that's the edge there, but didn't have very high average yards per attempt, so it's not like either guy was really lighting the world on fire, and really, Fields is saved by the 80-yard touchdown, because if it isn't an 80-yard touchdown there, he's thrown for less yards on the same number of attempts, and much less complete percentage, but oh well, you know, have that, you'll have that. Gibson, almost 100 yards, but still only four, under 4 yards per attempt, so get that up there, and he gets it for sure, um, but... A busy day on the ground for him. Ayuk with 164 of Fields' 360 yards. So, real busy for him. Does get that touchdown. Thomas Harmon leading the way for the Commanders. Hurt had a nice day. He's been really good for them, actually. Um, so, we got John Ross injured again. What's what's new there? Uh, Trent Williams does get injured on the game. So, just sure. So, uh, both those injuries are serious. That's a big hit. But Fred Warner, 14 tackles, leading the way. Nick Bosa. Brian Burns, who is also injured, so pass rush taking a big hit. Could have been, you know, Trent Williams and Nick Bosa, or and uh, Brian Burns could have definitely flipped the uh, script of the game as uh, Bosa and I'll show you get the sacks. Curl and Lattimore with the interceptions, deflections, you got a few, no forced fumbles, no blocked, one safety by Nick Bosa, and one touchdown by Lattimore. Sievert didn't miss his kicks. Cade York does miss a 49-yarder. He's been really good on the year, so it's kind of an uncharacteristic miss for him. Um, and then for the punting here, pretty good day for both guys, actually. 50 net yards for one each. But yeah, so they're fighting for. They're only one win away. Um, so they just got to take care of business here today, and they got the number one seed. They can start resting guys uh, for the playoffs. And Dallas going to jump out 7-3. to three. Lots of punting, it looks like. Philly does take the lead back. Will they jump out to a two-score lead real quick? Dallas does answer before half, but Philly answers again 23-14 to 14 at half. Dallas ties it up. Dallas takes that three-point lead. Philly answers. Dallas by a touchdown. Philly answers again. Overtime. Philly's going to win it. A big time win in overtime against Dallas by the Philadelphia Eagles going up against their uh, rival here and they take care of business 37 to 34 a big time high scoring game um, we'll take a look at the scoring summary to see how we got here I mean Elliot Elliot's really taking over the game early uh, Quez Watkins touchdown Keyshawn Vaughn touchdown gives them a big lead but Zeke cuts it back Vaughn gives them a down that's a big advantage there. I think that's a safety there uh, with the Elliott touchdown, but they they get the two-point conversion and, wait, do you get the two? I don't know. Score guy messed up. It's Dallas. So they scored 13 there. And Zerlin gets the field goal. Elliott with field goal. O'Shaughnessy. Amon Ross St. Brown gets that 31-yard touchdown to tie it up. And then Jake Elliott, 37-yarder to ice the game. Big game from Philadelphia. Hurts, two touchdowns, no picks, 64% completion edge, so not necessarily on Hurts. He had a good day, but it wasn't, you know, killing it. Um, but Dak Press got two picks, only one touchdown, only quit 56% of his passes. That's, that's why they uh, struggled today, you know, just couldn't move the ball enough through the air. Um, kind of like their typical staple. Uh, Keyshawn Vaughn had a really nice day on the ground, so, you know, 92 yards. Zeke is 5.7 per carry and three touchdowns. 
Um, so both guys really run the ball while Miles Sanders goes down with an injury. O'Shaughnessy with the touchdown. CeeDee Lamb, 77 yards. Jacoby Myers. Uh, Quez Watkins has to get injured, has 82 yards. Elijah Moore and Amon Ra each having very nice days. Amon Ra getting that touchdown. Randall Cobb with 93 yards is huge. Um, as we'll take a look at the blocking. Zeke, Collins, Neal, who does get hurt, and Mylotta a lot of the sacks. <coughs> Diggs, Thompson, and David Collins with the tackles. Demarcus Lawrence with two tackle for losses here. Here there at one. Josh Sweat and Parsons each getting a sack. Arden Key, Shaq Thompson, Demarcus Lawrence, and Tristan Hill all having half sacks. TJ Edward and Devin White getting the interceptions. Dante Jackson with two deflections. No blocks, no safeties, and no defense. Touchdowns into the kicking here. One missed kick by Greg the Leg. Was it an overtime wonder? No idea, but it certainly hurts that he missed it. Uh, if it makes it, you know, they probably win. But that's going to do it here. Philly gets the big time win that they needed. Advance. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to SoFi Stadium. Another another game hosted here. Feels like we're here every week. Crazy how that works, right? Two games, two teams in the stadium. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the Rams are looking to get back on track. Uh, they get Cooper Cup back this week, I believe. So that could be a huge boost for them. They're looking to be able to take advantage of that, but they're not going to have an easy task. Uh, they can take possession of the division with a win here this week. Um, kind of get back control of their own destiny. Um, so they just need to do it. Let's see if they can pull it off. Rams strike first, a three. Defensive slugfest, it looks like. Six to nothing at half. Rams do open up the two possession lead, but Denver immediately scores that touchdown to answer. Seven point game. Tied it up, overtime. That's going to be the Denver Broncos are going to win it. Rams absolutely choked this one. They could have had it, but the Broncos, cardiac kids, keep, keep going at it. Nick Folk, two field goals. Williams run, they get the two-point version. And then a 70, I mean, 75 yard. You can't give up a 75 yard touchdown. But they do. Doolin, uh, McManus field goal. And then Albert O. You know, ends up tying it up. McManus field goal to win it. Watson, I mean, 60% completion percentage isn't good. Two touchdowns, two picks. So he very much had a mixed bag kind of game. Uh, Stafford just didn't do anything. 54% completion percentage, you know, low yards per attempt. Uh, just it, there was nothing really going from the Rams side. Jamal Williams had a nice day, 70 yards, touchdown. Um, but no one else really got particularly going here. Um, Jerry Judy, yeah, Cooper Cup, and he's back, 94 yards. He did Cooper Cup things. Alberto with 80 yards and a touchdown. Devonta Smith, 82 yards as well. Nice day for him. But yeah, it's a. Uh, what can you say? You gotta win these. Uh, follow a, I mean, a lot of sacks allowed. Patrick Pierce to 13 tackles leads the way. Rockers, Foy Luakun. Or Foy Fadakasi, sorry. But four runs for Fadakasi. I was thinking of someone else. Uh, I gotta sleep more for these games. <laughs> Malik Reed, three and a half sacks. Chubb, two. Aaron Donald with two. Leonard Floyd with one. Jaquan Brisker with a half sack. Geno Stone, Anthony Walker with the picks. Andre Campbell and Brisker with the deflections. Jalen Ramsey forces and recovers fumble. Turns up two yards. No blocks, no safeties, and no touchdowns. Nick Folk misses 50 plus yarder. A difference in the game. Went a lot of that this week. But yeah, Broncos taking care of business, winning again. They're going to have a big date with the Chiefs next week. Uh, Try to keep things rolling. I don't think they have a chance at division anymore after their loss against the Chiefs, but it'd be close. Um, they need the Chiefs to lose that, I think. Um, but, I know the Chiefs have lost the division, I'm pretty sure. Have they? I don't know. Oh, well, either way, Broncos taking care of business. I mean, I, they might have clinched the playoffs. I don't know. I haven't looked at the wild card in the AFC um, with the Bengals' loss. I'm guessing they did. I'm guessing everybody clinched. We got one more game, Chargers Colts coming up. See you there.
All right, so I took a look at it. The Chiefs have clinched the division. Uh, they can't lose enough games to get tied with them in losses, and they can't win enough games to tie them in wins. Um, so they do have a two-and-a-half game lead, regardless of the outcome. So Chiefs have already clinched the division. They have that locked up, so they're not playing for that. Uh, but a very fun circumstance here for the AFC wildcard picture as the only team stopping the entire AFC wildcard picture from being locked up is the Colts. The Colts win today. Nobody clinches officially. And really, the Chargers are feeling pretty pretty shaky at that because then they'll only be, it'll be two games back. Two to go. Possible. You know, someone's going to lose out and they're going to have to win out, so they're going to need a lot of help. But they, uh, and they're probably hoping that's the Chargers at that point. But that's that's at stake. Uh, kind of a weird circumstance for the other wildcard teams because they could, you know, breathe a sigh of relief, right? Oh, they close the division. Sure. We're good to go. But I clinched the wildcard. But if the Chargers win, they still have to fight for seeding. Um, so, and you obviously want to be the number four seed, play the AFC East. Um, so for the for five seed, the five seed in both conferences is very valuable right now. Well, everyone wants it, it feels like. But we will get right into it. Chargers take a three nothing lead. Colts jump out to the six to three lead now. Nine to three. Hey, a touchdown now. Colts have jumped up to a big lead, but Chargers embrace it in like a second. Now they're up by seven. Colts answer. Chargers up by seven, and that's going to be the game. They do score a garbage time touchdown, make it interesting, but the extra field goal that the Chargers got ended up being the difference. 34 to 31. The Colts are now eliminated. The AFC wildcard picture is fully locked up, except for seeding, which does still definitely matter for these teams. Nobody wants to play the. You know, the non AFC <laughs> East opponents because Jags have been really good all year. Kind of cooled off now. Um, the Steelers were the one seed for a long time. Steelers or, Char or Chiefs, whoever ends up as not the one seed. You don't want to necessarily play them. You, you just rather, you'd rather not. But yeah, pick six by Derwin James flips the entire game on its head. Is after that, it's a, you know, an Eckler run. They're like, oh, you're still down by a good bit, you know. Still down seven. But touchdown on defense, then Herbert gets a touchdown again, T.Y. Hilton though, I mean, answers the call, uh, then Reed, Hopkins field goal, and Sutton touchdown in garbage time, they just about pulled it out, but too little too late for the Colts season overall, they do get a fake field goal, or, or a fake punt, or whatever, 27 yards, that's big for them, Herbert had a nice day, only the one touchdown though, Wentz does throw two picks, but overall still a pretty nice day for him too, uh, you just needed to see me, maybe one pick, and they could win this game. Uh, Eckler, 4.5 yards per carry, and the touchdown. Um, Herbert has two runs per negative yards. Keenan Allen does go down with an injury. That could be big for them in the playoffs. Cortland Sutton, 130 and a touchdown. Hunter Henry, 76. Keenan Allen, 89, leads the way for the Chargers, but again, injured. Uh, T.Y. Hilton, 7 for 127 and a touchdown. So big, big days for all them. Mike Williams also injured. So those are serious injuries. That's a big big blow to the offense for this Chargers team. Um, they're going to need to hope these are not very serious. Um, but Tommy Doyle, lost two sacks. Step it in um, for them. Darius Leonard and Xavier Rhodes over 10 tackles. Tillery and Forrest Buckner with two tackle for losses here. Cam Jordan, two sacks. Bosa with one. Buckner with one. Dunlap with one. Michael Davis and Derwin James with the picks. Derwin James obviously being the pick six. Talana. Jalen Watson. I wanted him, but. <laughs> Touchdowns again, Derwin. Like I said. Missed 40. Wait, no. That's sorry. I have my columns all mixed up. No one missed a kick today. Good job by everybody involved. Get a gold star. Tavon Austin, two hurt. God, that's three receivers down for the Chargers. Who did they throw to today? Anyway, big win. I mean, with all the injuries, especially, to overcome adversity and go ahead and pull out the W. Um, I don't know when I'm going to be able to record stats and stuff. I, I might not be able to. We'll look at the standings now, actually, because I don't want to leave you high and dry with that. We'll talk about the stuff, because that's our last game. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to it, if I'm honest. Uh before I need to start recording the next games. I'm behind. I was hoping to have this all done last night. Um, so we will hopefully 
figure this out here. Uh, it's not going to have all the updated tiebreaker stuff or the clinching stuff, but let's look at the seedings here. So, um, as you can see, let's, uh, let's just sort by wins. So, Chiefs, oh wait, win percentage, yeah. I think they can do that. Chiefs, the one seed, still maintaining that half game lead. They're not going to clinch unless the Steelers lose. Um, they can clinch the next week, though. I mean, they have a clinching scenario now. They didn't this week, but they do now. Uh, Steelers lose to the Ravens. They win. They're, they're the number one seed. They can rest their starters next week. So, uh, this is the toughest game for the Steelers left for sure. It's their easiest chance to clinch it. Uh, the Broncos, Ravens, and Chargers all sit here. Um, their tiebreaker scenario will go down to conference record first, then division record. So, All right, Chargers are going to be the lowest because they don't have the AFC wins. Um, and divisionally, Ravens and Broncos are still tied all the way down. They played, didn't they? But it, would it go to that in a three-way tie, though, is the question. Because uh, it, would, it would Okay, I'm guessing that the Broncos, who I think won their matchup, I think the Broncos won the head-to-head. -head. So the Broncos may be the number five seed at the moment. Ravens six. Charger 7. That's what I think it is. I'm not 100% sure. You can correct me, Prussia, if I'm wrong. Uh, and then the Jaguars are going to hold the number 3 seed at the moment. Um, and then the unfortunates here, the over 500 teams that are still already eliminated despite having two games left. Um, and then the Bills, who are the tops in the AFC East. The AFC East as a whole lost this week except for Buffalo. So kind of the inverse of what had been happening uh, as they do get a now game lead over the Patriots that does not knock out their Week 18 matchup yet um, for being a must-win for Buffalo. Um, so Patriots are still definitely in it. I would say the Dolphins and Jets are now out of it. I don't think they have a path to win it. Um, let's go to the NFC, but we will look at the divisions too, of course. So, Cowboys, like I said, the loss certainly hurts because they could have rested everybody for the next two weeks or so. But the Packers, on a bit of a hot streak, still have a shot at the number one pit, or number one seed, but the Cowboys only got to win one more. So, they're still kind of on the outside looking in of that. Uh, the Falcons are going to hold on to the three seed. So, the three-way tie in the division. Go to division record first. Yeah, Falcons at four and one, still going to hold on to the division record. They are going to play the Bucks, you know, next. So... That's going to be a big one for them. But so it's going to go Falcons, Panthers, and then Bucks in the division. Um, so Falcons is or yeah, Falcons is the number three seed, um, and I think it's still going to be the Niners. Yeah, because everybody lost in the division. <laughs> so we are going to have a sub five hundred winner because everybody yeah everybody in the <laughs> NFC least here or NFC worst or whatever you want to call it. Um, Blessed is what I've been calling it, I think. But yeah, uh, six and nine, they're gonna have the number four seed. And then going back to the playoff hunt, these two are the only teams above 500 in the wild card right now. Panthers and Bucks, they play I think next week. But we'll take a look at the conference record, which is tied. And so that would be the Panthers win it because they have the division record and a head-to-head -head too, actually. So maybe it wouldn't have even gotten there. But Panthers as the five, Bucks as the six, and between the Lions and Giants as the seven seed, the Lions won their matchup, I want to say. Pretty sure the Lions won their matchup, so I think that they'd be the top seed here. Uh, but if it didn't go to that, if it went to the, the conference record, the Giants are a much better team in the conference. So uh, maybe if it wasn't that, but I think it is. So the Lions, I think, are going to need... Oh, the Giants are going to need... Uh, someone to tie them for it to be the case. Like, so with the Bucks, they both win and the Bucks lose next week, then they need that tie to give them into the, t the tiebreaker that favors them. So that's something to keep an eye on for their uh, playoff hopes down the stretch. A tough loss for them. They could have easily walked into that, you know, well above 500 record, but still got some time. Uh, see North, the same story as before. Two games separating them. The rubber meets the road today, or today, next week. Ravens Steelers, prime time. That game will decide if the Ravens still have a chance going into Week 18, or if the Steelers can coast through it and win it. Uh, Ravens have really been hot as of late. You know, three win streak. I mean, Steelers too, but like, I feel like they've been playing really good football. The Browns trying to go for that 
pick better for the Saints. Working good for them. Um, but uh, in the AFC South, locked up. Wait, is it? No, it's not. It's not locked up. I forgot about that. The Titans do have the head-to-head win advantage over them. So even though divisionally they're worse, they can still knock them off in Week 18. So the Jaguars still need a win. Their magic number is still in the one because they haven't clinched. They do have a sweep over the Colts, though. So the Jags have beaten over the Colts. I forgot that that wasn't really important to them in that last game because it was really the Titans that they were worried about because the Colts would have had to leave them so much that it would have probably... The Titans had just as good a shot. But, so the Titans still in it. Barely. East here. AFC East. What can I say except... Yikes, you know? It's the same story as last week, but now it's looking a little more bleak for the Patriots. Uh, six and nine, a game back. They just really needed to keep winning. Um, and they didn't. Uh, they have, you know, they have a two-game lead over the division. They can win this next division game. You know, they're still sitting really good divisionally, but uh, that's not going to matter because it's just going to be the head-to-head. They are simply just going to need to win out, and they're in. doesn't matter what happens to Buffalo, that happens. If they lose next week, they need Buffalo to lose, or they're eliminated. But that Week 18 matchup is seemingly hurtling towards a very important one for them. Um, so we'll have to see how that shakes out. Like I said, AFC West now, locked up entirely. Three teams in the playoffs. Chiefs as fighting for the number one seed. Uh, that's where they're at. Um, and so that's what that's what they got going for them. NFC North locked up, Packers uh, locked it up this week um, before the Lions lost even, but the Lions lost would have locked them up last week. Um, so Packers division, they're fighting for the number one seed. Don't know if they're going to be able to get it, but that's what they're fighting for. Uh, Lions are fighting for their playoff lives here. Can the coming weeks they need to get to 9-8 uh, to have a chance at it, I would say. A- NFC South is an absolute dogfight. Uh, everybody except for the Falcons won this week. Falcons did have the hardest matchup, but that's really tough for them. <laughs> that's how that ended up shaking out. Uh, they're going to play, you know, both get a chance to play the Bucks. So the Bucks get a chance to play both the teams ahead of them. If they can finish 10-7, and seven, it's theirs, you know? That's what they got to do. Win out, they're in. Falcons and Panthers, whoever can upset the Bucks. Because I still think the Bucks should be the favorite. You know, better point differential, all that. So whoever can upset the Bucks, again, sweep the Bucks, is going to be the team that wins this. Panthers looking really strong. So I would put money on the Panthers to be the team to do it. Kind of long odds, <laughs> hopefully. But, yep, Cowboys still clinched the division, failed to clinch the conference because the Eagles win. Eagles are now two games up on the two teams that could – or the one team that could jump them. Um, and I think they lost to the Giants already. Um, they do have the conference over them, but I think it's close enough that they could lose out. The Giants get that one more win and could potentially do some fuckery and get over them. So uh, I would say they're not necessarily feeling great, but they could. St- I mean, they're a game away from clinching. We'll put it that way for them. The NFC West, man. Uh, it's just. Game. The Niners had this in the bag. Uh, they still have it in the bag because everybody lost. But uh, it's just it's the event of brutal. everyone lost this week. Cardinals are on a five-game losing streak, and they still are tied for the number one spot in the t- division. I mean, Tyrod Taylor is just a magical game away from putting them out top here. Uh, so it's what, what can I say? It's it's crazy. Rams getting cut back, but they really missed an opportunity uh, by not winning. Pretty simple. <laughs> Not winning. Um, Rams had two divisional games left. Uh, I don't know who they play. Maybe it was the Niners, actually. I think the Niners never play. Oh, they only have one. That's right. They play the Seahawks again. It's the tie that fucked me up. And the Cardinals and Niners play each other. So, um, yeah. But we'll take a look at the number one pick standings now real quick. The Texans and Saints still at the bottom. Saints, though, may not have... Uh, it would go to conference record first, I think. So in their own conference, the Saints are 2-8. and eight. 
in their own conference there at 2-8. and eight. This go divisionally. Oh, well, the Saints going to 0-5 in the division is going to be really clutch for any <laughs> tiebreakers here. So I'm not 100% sure why the Texans ended up ranking lower than them on the – but I don't know if it ranks at 5. But I think the Saints still have the number one uh, pick at the moment. Another win, though, gets them closer to not having that. Commanders win certainly – so Commanders and Bears kind of sitting on the outside of that top pick race. Still a chance at it. Texans at 3-12, and 12, too. Losing three in a row. They're going the right way for this. Uh, same with the Seahawks, who are, you know, lost three in a row down to the number five pick. Um, and then we have the Dolphins and Jets. Kind of this race. Let's see the Commanders and Bears. Who would be, again, I think you have to go to the conference record first. So, yeah, the Bears would be the number three pick at the moment, I think. Commanders at two and nine are going to be the number four pick. Obviously, the Seahawks don't really have to worry about that. And yep, the Jets will be the number six pick. Uh, Vikings at five and five in the NFC. But yeah, so kind of some weird scenarios going on, of course. But uh, some teams certainly looking at some good picks. Uh, Raiders have fallen off too. Kind of getting into this. Uh, tier of teams, um, so we'll have to see if they can uh, keep it going, um, which I guess that's kind of a weird way to put it, right? But, you know, the Saints still holding on to number one pick, but they won, and if they can win again, I mean, they need a division win, really. They need a, they need a division win under their belt so that they can uh, um, sort of figure it out. Let's look at the league schedule for next week real quick as well, because I like to do that. Big game, like I said. Cardinals Falcons is going to be big for both these teams. Falcons can kind of put themselves another arm length ahead before their Week 18 matchup against the Bucks. Broncos Chiefs is huge for the Chiefs' number one pick uh, or number one seed odds. Uh, Saints versus the Eagles, so not an easy matchup for the Saints at all uh, to try to get that fourth win. They may have to do that in the division Week 18 against the Panthers. I'm sure. But yeah, if I'm, if I'm anticipating games I'm going to broadcast, it's going to be probably Steelers-Ravens, Broncos-Chiefs, maybe Bills-Bengals. It's just not, I mean, like, hmm. Like, playoff seeding-wise, right? Games that matter for that. Maybe the Rams Chargers is closer because the Bengals are officially eliminated from the playoffs. Like, they can't get in. So if we're talking about, like, two teams that need it, the Rams and Chargers still both have a chance at it. Uh, like a reasonable chance even for the Rams. They can start winning these games. Um, Niners obviously are in the thick of it, but not really. Man, this one doesn't matter. Packers, I mean, kind of an outside shot at it, but the Vikings aren't in it. Um, Eagles looking to lock up playoffs. It's not really. Colts, Giants. Giants are in the playoff push. The Colts are not. Dolphins, Patriots. Patriots are definitely in the push, but, like, I don't know if that's... Both teams don't need that. Obviously, Broncos Chiefs, like I said, two playoff teams. Jaguars need it, but Texans don't. Bears, Lions. Lions need it. Bears don't. Yeah, Cardinals, Falcons. So, Card Cardinals, Falcons, Steelers, Ravens, and... Uh, oh, Panthers, Bucks. That's a big one. Yeah, Panthers, Bucks. Who did I miss? I had someone else on this list. Broncos, Chiefs. So that'll be the four games. It'll be Cardinals, Falcons, Steelers, Ravens, Broncos, Chiefs, Panthers, Bucks. That's going to be my four games I'll pick. I'll try to get all of them done uh, for that. But that's that's likely the four most important games. Um, Alright guys, well, catch you next time.